Hi, I'm XO, and this video is about a really cool new feature called Auto CRT. This was developed by John Novak at the DOSBox Staging Project. Uh, might be a good time to mention there are different forks of DOSBox. DOSBox being the emulator that we use for DOS games. It emulates both the machine and the OS. And there are multiple forks of DOSBox, and this is because different forks focus on different things. Uh, there is no one fork that can run every DOS game at this point. However, the most active fork that I've been working with in the past year or two has been staging. Now, this feature is something that I was... One of the things I was holding off on the version 6 release for, so having this done and rolled out, is really freaking cool. Auto CRT is a CRT shader. CRT means cathode ray tube, just in case... Um, you're new to this, or we do have some younger folks who are into the into the videos and the project these days. CRT are the old, uh, the big monitors. The ones that were not flat, not the LED or LCD screens. Uh, they generally were phosphor. Um, that meant they had a, uh, a bleed to them. So the colors were not super sharp. And what happens is when we take a game that was developed for a CRT, and we play it on a modern machine, we get a weird effect. Let me go ahead and pull up Commander Keen here. And what I've done is I've taken Aliens Ate My Babysitter and I have launched it twice here. We have it here and we have it here. Oh, there it goes. Now you'll see here there's a difference. The left side of your screen is super sharp. The right side, a little bit fuzzier. That's the scan lines that the Auto CRT shader is adding to it. That's a lot more realistic to how the game was designed. Now, in a game like Commander Keen, it's not as critical. But it does make it look a lot cleaner, in my opinion. And this screen right here, the scan lines smooth out some of the details. And not in a way that causes you to lose detail, but actually causes them to look more realistic. Here you can see... Like the waterfall on the left side is so sharp that it looks like lines dropping, whereas the water on the right side didn't have that same approach. You can see it right here. It looks a little fuzzier, but that also makes it smoother in the way it flows. Now, what's really cool here is Novak has made this, the term he likes to use is zero config. In other words, you don't have to come in and mess with any settings at all to make this work. Now we've put this in the alternate launcher and I'll show you how we do that in just a moment here. But first I'll talk about the Auto CRT. It is a collection of 18 different shaders. And for those of you who have used shaders before, you'll be familiar with the fact that you generally pick a shader before you start playing. And that means if you have CGA games, you pick a CGA shader. If you have EGA games, you pick an EGA shader. Uh, if you're running a CGA game, but DOSBox is set to be Super VGA, that might cause a problem. You might have to change the machine type to get that to work. I'm going to go ahead and um, kill that noise. I'm talking about CRT shaders. There it goes. Okay. What's amazing here is it will dynamically choose the best shader in that exact moment for what you have on your screen and what resolution you're running at. If you have a CGA game loaded up and your screen is 720, you'll get that shader. If it's 2K, you get a different CGA shader. If it's 4K, you get a different CGA shader. The resolution is important because it determines how the, the shader functions on your screen. If you run a CGA game and the machine type set to VGA, no problem. It knows that the game is CGA. It will auto-select that shader. So it's an adaptive CRT shader. You don't have to fudge around. You don't have to set a different setting for all your games. You literally, I'm going to go ahead and kill this here so that we can show you. You right-click on the game you want to run this on. You go to Pixel Perfect and Shader Options. And you'll see right now I have mine set to CRT Auto is on. And if I say yes, I want to launch those settings, I'm in and it picked the right shader. I can even drag my screen around 
and it will pick the right, it'll modify the shader if I jump to the next uh, resolution size for it. Now, it's also worth mentioning, there are some shaders out there that are pretty radical. Uh, they have curvature. You know, for example, I can pull one here if we launch this again. And this time I'm going to say different settings. And I'm going to go to the GL shader and scalar selection. And I'm, you'll see the first option we have is adaptive CRT shaders. If you pick that, you are getting the auto CRT shader that I've demoed for you so far. Really cool. No fudge. You just turn it on. It goes. It will pick the best one for you. Uh, there's even a really cool thing. Uh, this took some special coding, uh, and John was, uh, I want to share it because it was uh, really cool he pulled this off. There are a handful of VGA games that use an EGA mode, but with a VGA palette. Yes, I know, that can be confusing, but there are some of them that do that. And those games wouldn't run on an EGA card, but they do use an EGA mode. These auto CRT shaders can detect those games and pick a, even though it's an EGA mode, it detects that it's using a VGA color palette and it will use a VGA CRT auto shader for it. Uh, really neat stuff here. Anyway, let's jump over here. So, so let's go over to the fixed CRT shader now. And we're going to pick number 13 here. The lots fast with subtle gain. Uh, leave pixel perfect out. And here you're going to see some curvature on the edge of the screen. You're going to see um, a little bit of shading on the corners to darken it. This is like an artist's interpretation of um, what it would have been like to look at a CRT screen. Some folks might consider this a bit exaggerated. Uh, other CRT shaders have a tendency to overly blur and overly fuzz things. Now, one thing that I was getting at earlier is there are some older games, CGA specifically, that, um, and EGA did it too, I suppose. You know, CGA only had a four-color palette to work with, and EGA had 16 colors to work with. So in order to look like there were more colors on the screen than there really were, they would rely on using a certain color next to another certain color, and then the phosphor bleed would make it look like there was interstitial color in between them. So it would give the illusion that there were more colors than there really were on the screen. When playing those older games with uh, the CRT shader, you're kind of bringing some of that out. Now, that's not to be confused with composite CGA, which I have a whole other video coming on, thanks to a lot of work Python did. And that um, actually relied on displaying the CGA screen in a whole different manner to create the illusion of a lot more color. Um, but that's another video. This one is about the auto adaptive CRT shader. It's a really cool feature. You you can run it in. Go uh, let's see here. Let's let's take a game and say let's jump back over to the CGA games, and uh, so we're gonna run this guy here. We do not want to launch those settings, and this time we're gonna pick adaptive, not pixel perfect, and we're gonna go with an RGB color output to keep it. And we'll say keyboard. I have a lot of nostalgia for the old CGA color palette, especially the magenta cyan one. Not so much the green, reddish, orange one. Earth 2301 AD. Man, I had a fine. Sorry. <laughs> I love the... Uh, <laughs> we finally learned to live in peace, and then here comes the ant people. Now, I'm going to play the same game, but this time I'm not going to play it with CRT shading turned on. Get past the key punch logo. I wouldn't be surprised if key punch stole this from somebody. That's what they were best at. It's really bright. It's almost, it's too bright in some ways. It's harsh. The CRT calms things down. It, and for anyone who grew up using a CRT monitor, it makes it feel 
a lot more natural. I think that's the best way to put it. It's a natural filter. Um, we didn't play games back in the 80s that had an in-your-face, blow-your-eyeballs-out bright magenta sitting on top of a cyan that could melt ice. It, you know, I mean, these are really brilliantly bright colors. And it's neat, but it's not original. And again, for the sake of preservation, it's really cool to be able to take these games. And it's one thing to find the original software and to restore the original software than to get it running. But then we start dealing with the limitations of today's hardware versus old hardware. And these kind of things, shaders, uh, they help us approximate the limitations of yesterday's hardware, even though we don't have those limitations anymore. And if someone enjoys playing it like this, then more power to them. That's not a wrong way to play these games. But for those who do appreciate the original, the, the original presentation of them, we have that. I mean, there are still folks that want to keep original hardware around so they can play these games on original hardware all the way. And I totally understand that. Uh, the best emulation cannot 100% emulate that feeling and that style. But we're getting closer all the time. And there will be a day, I do believe, that uh, between shaders and emulation cycles and the way it's all written, that we can get really, really close. And having guys like John Novak write auto selected zero config CRT shaders that are intelligently picking the right way to do it, that goes a really freaking long way to getting there. Let's say John did the opposite. Let's say he went the other route and he made 18 really cool shaders and it was up to you or me or whoever's configuring all this crap to always pick the right one. But I don't know before you start the game if you're going to pick CGA mode or EGA mode or VGA mode. I don't know if you've got a 4K yet or a 2K or you're on a 720. And so we have to write all these things that ask you a ton of questions every time you start in the game before we even get there. And what is that doing? It's creating a negative experience for the user. You want to play the game, not answer 15 questions. What if you don't know what your resolution is? What if you don't know what CGA means? That's valid. Not everyone knows what that means. You don't have to. It will auto-do it for you. So thank you, John. That is a really cool feature. I'm so proud to have it in Exodus and to be one of the first uh, outlets to really feature and focus on this really awesome new development coming out of staging. And as staging continues to add new features, we will continue to add them to Exodus and push them out through the updater. Thanks, guys.